Well, the Lions are not going to go undefeated this season. It was a stressful game. Uh, if you're a Lions fan, you watched the game last night or yesterday afternoon, I should say. Uh, offense was clicking uh, a lot better than uh, week one. Uh, so that was that was good to see that our offense was back to what uh, we were used to last year. However, that defense is a little deja vu from last year, especially in the Seattle game, ironically. Um, yeah, uh, if you saw my keys to the game video, I said one of the keys was get pressure on Geno Smith. Do not let him get comfortable in the pocket. Well, we got some pressure, but we weren't bringing him down. And that means he was able to find open receivers. And the fact is that I was not impressed with our defense at all. Like, I don't know what the game plan was, but obviously it didn't work. Uh we need to throw that defensive game plan into the trash and burn it because too many times that I see our cornerbacks just sit 10 yards off the receiver, which just gave just a quick completion, usually for a first down to Tyler Lockett or D DK Metcalf. There was no defensive adjustments at all that I saw. I mean, Jerry Jacobs was on an island all night against DK Metcalf. And he was getting burned every single time. And there was no adjustments. Like, everybody's saying that we should throw Jerry Jacobs into the trash or, you know, or anything like that. I still believe Jerry Jacobs is a talented cornerback, but I just don't think he is good enough. And this means, and this does not mean any disrespect to him at all, but I just don't think he's good enough to be one on one with DK Metcalf all game. Like, there was just no help. And that falls on the on the coaches, in my opinion. If you're seeing a guy get beat multiple times and it's just not getting fixed or he's just not improving, you need to get safety help on him. And it just wasn't happening. It was giving easy completions to DK Metcalf all game. And same goes with Tyler Lockett, too. Um, we just couldn't make the stops we needed to. And, again, that is a lot of deja vu from a year ago. Not only in the Seahawks game, but for the – Basically, the first half of last year. Now, I'm not ready to give up on Aaron Glenn. I'm not ready to give up on, you know, this year just yet. We're only through week two. We're one and one, just like we were last year. But this is where we need to pay real attention to what this team does in these next few weeks. These next three weeks, in my opinion, are the most important three weeks of the season. And I'll tell you why. Last year, we were 1-1 one one after two games, first two games of the year. This year, we are 1-1 one one after the first two games of the year. Last year, after winning in week two, I know we won in week one, but after week two, we lost our next five in a row. We lost our next five in a row. Went 1-6. and six. We all know about that. Now, we did flip the switch. We won eight of our last ten. But it still wasn't enough to make the playoffs. Barely missing out. This year, this is why it's so important. Because we cannot start like that again. We cannot start like that again. And I'm telling you, this is... It's just, as a Lions fan, you probably are thinking to yourself, I mean, you still want to believe in the hype. You still want to believe that this team is a, you know, a Super Bowl contender that we all believed in the offseason. But you, we, we can't argue that this is starting to look kind of scary like last year where defense isn't playing as, as you know, as good as it should. And now we're on that roll to losing five straight again. Um, so yeah, these next few weeks are important. We need to, we need to figure out a way to at the very least go two and one in these next three games. And one of those wins has to be against green Bay in week four. It has to be because we cannot lose in the, in the division. Um, Atlanta will also be a tough test because they did just knock off the Packers after that crazy comeback. But Atlanta, I think is still beatable. I thought the Seahawks were beatable. They still are beatable. You know, we did make the Seahawks punt 
couple of times in this game, so it kind of was an improvement. But at the same time, we could not stop Seattle on third and long. Just like last year. And again, that was because on mainly third downs, we were just sitting in soft coverage. Like, we were not right up on them. They were we were just giving them 10 yards of separation, which I didn't, it just made no sense to me. I don't understand what that defense was. Now, a lot of people are, you know, criticizing Dan Campbell for, you know, that final drive at, you know, the end of the regulation where we only went for the field goal to tie and force overtime. I can see it both ways. We did not want to give the ball back to Seattle at all. I understand they got in overtime, but, you know, that's because of a coin flip. It wasn't our choice. <laughs> um, but negating the fact that they did get the ball in, in the overtime, we did not want to give Seattle the ball back at all in regulation. I can understand that. So you wanted to run down the clock. However, I can see where we have three timeouts, about a minute to go. Your offense has been good all game. The only hiccup was that pick six. And really, I don't believe that was on golf, but we'll get to that in a minute. But you have an offense that has, at that point, scored 28 points. They've been able to move up and down the field and score touchdowns. They've been able to do that. So why not put it in Goff's hands, who has been very good with his decision-making, not only throughout these first two games, but since he's been here in Detroit. Why not try to, you know, get a couple explosive plays? You know, use those timeouts. You know, use the middle of the field. Try to get chunk plays instead of just dinking it down. You know, Josh Reynolds was having a great game. Why not keep going to him? Like, personally, in my opinion is we should have went for the win. And that isn't because we lost in overtime. Even if we won in overtime, I still would have said, we need to go get the win in overtime. I mean, go get the win in regulation. Because this just shows, and I know that Dan Campbell is going to deny it, and same with the players, but what it seemed like to me is we're still not comfortable of being aggressive enough to go for the win. Which is weird to say because Dan Campbell is one of the most aggressive head coaches in the league. Goes for it on fourth down almost every single time, which I believe he needs to lay it back on it. He needs to learn just to take the points at times. Yeah, it sucks because it's just a field goal. We want the touchdowns. We get it. You know, we want the first downs. We want the touchdowns. And yes, the fourth downs, we actually convert a good percentage of them, to be honest. I, mean, I know it's not all of them, but we actually convert more times than not, I feel like. But at the end of the day, If he would have taken his points early in that game, we all know what we're talking about. We, Lions fans should know what I'm talking about. If you watch that game, you should know what I'm talking about. If he took those points earlier in the game, that last drive, would have been we would have been tied going for the walk-off field goal instead of forcing overtime and having the defense make a stop in overtime even though they didn't. Which, also, by the way, 800 has been was being held all game, but, but yeah, you know, it sucks. Um, it just seems like we can't beat Seattle right now. And, you know, it kind of reminds me of our, you know, that record of not winning in Lambeau for that long period of time since Barry Sanders, but we finally got that monkey off our back a few years back. Now it seems like the new monkey is to Seattle. We just can't seem to beat Seattle. Um, but again, I'm not ready to jump ship yet. Uh, offense looked good. Jared Goff looked amazing. Again, yeah, he had a pick six, just like last year. Although in this case, I'm not putting this interception on Goff. I'm not. Last year, yes, that was him. <laughs> that was just him making a bad throw. Now, now some people could say that... Um, some people could say that... Uh, he shouldn't have thrown that ball either, which I can see that, but I put that interception more on the route runner, which I believe it was Jameer Gibbs. I, 
I don't know exactly what the play was, but what I saw when I re-looked at it was it looked like he was supposed to run that angle route that, you know, if you play Madden, you love to run that route with the running back. That's what it looked like to me, and it looked like he wasn't, like, decisive enough on that route. Like, it looks like he was kind of hesitant on that route. It wasn't like that, uh, you know, that what's the word like he, he just wasn't aggressive enough for that route that I think Jared Goff was expecting and you know with him being under pressure I think that you know he just threw it expecting that you know it gives to be this at this place and he wasn't now some could say shouldn't have thrown that ball it's not you know it's not an easy completion it's in you know it could turn into trouble which it did you know just throw it away but at the same time I'm still not putting this game on golf. He played good. He threw over 300 yards, three touchdowns. Um, He was not the reason why we lost. He still was able to lead an offense that scored 31 points. It's just our defense allowed. Our defense allowed 30. Our defense allowed 30. I say that because that pick six. He minus the pick six, which is seven points. You minus that, and uh, you get 30. But um, I still think the defense played a little bit better against Seattle this year than we did last year, but it wasn't enough. Um, but we also got to talk about the elephant in the room, and that is these NFL refs this year, at least the first two games, are just terrible. Um First off, they're not calling false starts as much as they should. They're not calling holding calls as much as they should. I mean, and this is not just saying it's happened to the Lions. I've watched other games as well, and it seems like the same problem is happening in those games as well. Um, But in the Lions game alone, I'm sorry. Even as a a non-Lions fan, you cannot deny... That that last play of overtime, that Aiden Hutchinson was not held. He was held blatantly. I mean, <laughs> he had a, basically a chokehold on him from the offensive lineman, preventing him from getting after, you know, Geno Smith. That's a hold. That's just that's not me saying because I'm a Lions fan. That's me because I know what holding is. <laughs> like if you if you watch football, you know what holding is. That's a hold. I mean, you can't just put a defender in a chokehold just because you don't want him to go get your quarterback. Um, and that was all game, just like last game against uh, the Chiefs. And I watched other games because I wanted to see if it was just ha- if it's happening to other teams. And it is. I've seen other holding calls not being called against other teams. This is a league problem, and it's false starts and holding that I've mostly seen the refs miss. Now, yes, I know there's holding calls being called and false starts being called, but. I just think it's not being called enough. I don't think those two players are being called enough right now. And that's why I feel like teams are getting away with it because they're not getting called for it. And I think the league needs to do something about it because this is losing games for some teams while basically letting the other teams win. You know, um, you know, some people can say, well, you, you guys got to play better. I get that. You know, as a Lions fan, I wish our defense played better, and I'm not disputing the fact that our defense should have played better in that game. You know, that holding call isn't because isn't the reason why we lost. I'm just saying that that touchdown play shouldn't have happened. It should have been second down along and see what happens. But our defense let us down in this game. I get that. Our defense is the one is the reason why we lost. I'm not saying we lost because of non holding penalties. I'm just saying that. These refs need to do better. It just does. Um, they, they, I mean, they just do. Uh, because this is ridiculous. There's an amount of false start and holding penalties that are not being called, that are blatantly happening. Now, I didn't watch a lot of the Chiefs game. Um, and you guys can let me know in the comment section below. But that week one, Jawan Taylor, first off, had an illegal, uh, illegal uh, stance all game, never being called. He was false starting every play against us in week one. And he was holding Aiden Hutchinson almost all game. Barely getting called at all. Only got called at, you know, at the end of the game. I don't know what he did against 
Jacksonville. I don't know if he did the same things, and I don't know if he was called for it. Again, I didn't watch that game. Again, like I said before, it's hard for me to watch every single game. <laughs> I mean, I do my best. I mean, I, I mean, last Sunday I watched like ten games. Like I watched like four in the one o'clock games, and I try to pay attention to all the four o'clock games, but I, I, I can't, I can't watch all of them. Like it, I just can't. I, you know, but I don't know if if Joan Taylor was called or not. Um. But yeah, the, these refs are terrible this year, it seems like. And again, I'm not saying that it, the refs are the reason why we lost this game. We lost because our defense was just terrible and we weren't making adjustments. I understand that Aaron Glenn loves to play man-to-man. I do. And that's great. Man-to-man is a good defense if executed properly. But when you see... Your defense, especially one guy, get torched or get beat almost every single play. You have to make an adjustment. You have to say, okay, this this, this corner, he's he's just not cutting it right now by himself. He needs help with safety help. Or switch it out, take him out, or change the lineup, put him on someone else. It just it he didn't do that. Um, again, I'm not ready to give up on Aaron Glenn just yet. I think he is a good coach. I do. But we need to start seeing results. We, our defense played good against Kansas City. If we had that, if we had the defense we played against Kansas City, we would have won this game. So I have to, we all, I, I think we need to give, I know that and, and I'm not saying the leash should be long. I think the leash should be shorter this year than it was last year. But again, we're only in week two. Let's see what our defense is after week four. These next two weeks. Let's see how we do against the Falcons and then against the Packers. If our defense through these next two games is anything like Seattle, I think it's time to let Aaron Glenn go. However, if we start playing defense like we did against Kansas City and we start improving these next two weeks, I think we need to let Aaron Glenn stay. Again, we have to see what we do these next two weeks, in my opinion. I don't know what the leash is. I don't know what Dan Campbell, because I know Dan Campbell loves Aaron Glenn and Ben Johnson. He loves his two coordinators. Ben Johnson's gotten results, so we can see why he loves him. I can see why Lions fans are wondering why the hell does he like Aaron Glenn. He might be a good person. He might be a very nice guy. And again, just because you are a bad defensive coordinator doesn't mean you're not smart. He might be one of the brightest coaches in the league, but if he's not getting results, that's a different story. But we'll have to see what happens. You know, it's just a disappointing loss. But come on, guys. We weren't going 17-0. As much as it would have been fun to do that, we aren't going 17-0. Um, it's a long season. It's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, there's going to be hard times. There's going to be some bad losses of games that we should have won. This is one of them. We should have won this game, but we didn't. Now let's see how this team reacts. Because first two years haven't reacted well. We can't seem to turn the tide, you know. First year we got kind of unlucky early on, you know, losing to that 67-yard field goal from Justin Tucker, and then the very next week losing to another walk-off field goal. You know, two games we should have won. <laughs> that Who knows? If we, if we would have won those both, both of those games, I can guarantee you that we would not have gone 3-13-1 that first year. Who knows what would have happened? I'm not saying we went to the playoffs, but I think that I think that losing that game against Baltimore was just, you know, saying you – you because that defense that defense was actually good. I mean, can we get the back to that defense that we did against Lamar Jackson in that first year of Dan Campbell against the Lamar Jackson and the Ravens? You know, but uh, yeah, we uh, I feel like after that loss, it's just it was just such a sour spot because they're like thinking to themselves, we did everything right and we still lost. I mean, obviously offense could have done a little bit better, but. I mean, they they played their hearts out that game. They lost to a 67-yard field goal. Like, you know, I feel like that, that loss just really hurt their pride and hurt their confidence. And then losing basically like the same way in the very next week after taking the lead late and they lost again. I just feel like that just 
set the tone for the season after that week four and week three losses. Um, and then last year, you know, losing that heartbreaker to um, Minnesota after having, you know, not one but two multiple point, multiple, you know, 10 point leads, 10, 14, 10 plus leads, blowing both of them and then losing right at the end. I feel like that that just made us spiral out of the control, losing the next like four or five. So I'm not saying that, you know, the team responded horribly. It's just, it wasn't a good response because we weren't winning games. How is this team going to respond now after losing a heartbreaker Week two in their home opener, where the energy was high. We unveiled the Barry Sanders statue. He was in the building. Megatron was in the building. You know, there was a lot of hype, uh, obviously, with the Lions fans after beating the Chiefs. And then we have our home opener, four fields rocking, and then we lose a heartbreaker in overtime. How is this team going to react? That is going to be the big question. And that's why I'm looking forward to this next two or three weeks because that is that. I think these next three weeks are the most important because if we go 0 and 3 through these next three weeks, we can kiss our season goodbye. I know it's 1 and 4, and teams can come back from that, but that's basically like what happened last year. We went 1 and 6, 1 and 4, very similar. But if we go go 2 and 1, which I think we should against the opponents that we face. I think we should beat the Falcons next week. I think we should beat the Packers. We've been able to beat the Packers with Aaron Rodgers. We should be able to do it with Jordan Love. Now, I'm not. Jordan Love has looked good. I'm not disputing that. That defense has also looked good, too. But we should beat the Packers. I think we are the better team. And then I think we play the Panthers um, after... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think we face the Panthers after the uh, Packers. And I think we should be able to beat them, too. Um, so these next three weeks are all winnable games. So if we don't go at the very least two and one, if we go one and two or worse, I think we might have to consider the fact that we need to make some changes and the seasons might be over. I could be overreacting a little bit, but as of right now, it is not cause for concern just yet in Detroit. I think we just need to relax, say, okay, it was a bad week. Let's refocus. Let's go after Atlanta next week. Let's go win against Atlanta. So, yeah, as much as this loss stings, but, I mean, if we look at it, Jared Goff played amazing, but so did Gino. Got to do better. You got to do better. Hopefully Montgomery's okay. I don't know what the reports are. Um, uh, There are some things saying that he might be out for a couple of weeks. Uh, which kind of sucks. Um, I know Montgomery did lose that fumble that did turn in the points. I think, yeah, I think it did turn into, I think, a field goal. I, I can't remember. Let's see, actually, if this app does have... Yeah, fumble by David Montgomery. Nope, that was at the end of the half. Never mind. It was this one. Yeah, Montgomery fumbles. Which, okay, it did lead to a touchdown. Okay, so that fumble did lead to a touchdown. But I still like Dave Montgomery. I like the way he plays. He runs really well. Um, and I'm hoping he's okay. But if he's out, it falls on our, you know, our rookie running back, Jameer Gibbs, that we're so high on. So this is going to be his opportunity to show that, yeah, he is what is advertised. It's there. I can see the tools that are there and these limited amount of uh, touches he has. Now, he does have a little bit to learn still. We get that. But you can see the talent. You can see he has the tools. But with maybe David Montgomery out for extended time, it's going to be him and Craig Reynolds. So, Jameer Gibbs might be able to get more touches. That was unexpected, but this could be our chance to see what Jameer Gibbs really has. So, I'm looking, kind of looking forward to that. But I'm also hoping for a speedy recovery from Montgomery for whatever he is and for however long he's out. Um, I'm also hoping that Amon Ross St. Brown is okay. He did play 
at the end of the game, so he does look like he's okay, but I'm hoping that uh, they are careful with him this week So, because uh, we need him, to be honest. On the offensive side, we do need him. He is our main guy. Uh, but that's going to do it for my reaction. I can't keep talking about it because I'm just going to keep getting heartbroken every time I talk about this game. Um, Lions fans, relax. It's only week two. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Got 15 more games. Luckily, the Packers lost and all the other division people lost. So we really didn't lose anything with the division. Um, so let's just focus on Atlanta, which I believe we can win. Hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about the Lions game. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.